Like a camel back? Yeah. Or a camel toe? I don't know how that escalated. Uh, Have you seen it? Never. What the hell? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another da -da. Da -da. bag. Woo! Guys, I'm so freaking excited because we have pretty much an entire whole king crab minus the bod bits because we've got two the massive... <gasps> We've got a whole king crab. Except the shell. Except the shell. We've got two sides of super large king crab legs plus the body and three packs of nuclear black bean noodles, which I thought would be the most delicious combination hanging on people call my laundry rack. But you know what? I take no offense. Before we dig into the ramen noodles, I know what you're thinking. Stephanie, tell me about how did you better your credit score before getting a home to make the process easier? And I'm here to answer your dreams and your questions right now because today's video is sponsored by Credit Sesame. Thank you for sponsoring today's video. I honestly discovered Credit Sesame through my fiance like five years ago. This is actually a love story. You guys wanted to know how we met. I'm just kidding. So today's video. <laughs> <On> Credit Sesame. <laughs> Right. He told me to download Credit Sesame because my credit score was not looking too good. Was not looking like a whole king crab meal. I know credit scores sound boring, but it's a huge factor in things like getting a home one day, owning a car, leasing a car, like these big life events that you should be excited about. I know what you're wondering. Stephanie, I don't even know my credit score and neither would I if I didn't have Credit Sesame. A lot of places will actually charge you just to know what your score is, but not Credit Sesame. They actually will give you your score for free. They also have free ID protection, which comes with $50,000 worth of theft insurance. And on top of that, today they will be helping me give away five MacBook Airs. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel, Stephanie Sue, and go download the Credit Sesame app and create your account. And then and comment when you're done and make sure that on your YouTube channel you do have like a viable email address linked to it because we will be emailing you if you are the five lucky winners and like all of the other details like the announcement days the links to download the free app all of that is gonna be linked in the description and thank you Credit Sesame for sponsoring today's video I can't believe we met on Credit Sesame also we didn't meet on Credit Sesame just so you guys know but he told me about Credit Sesame like months into our meeting I know someone's gonna be like oh I want to meet a fiance download the Credit Sesame <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? A good credit score is like a really good dating point these days. I'm just saying. I gotta go in with this king crab that fell off while I was. Okay, let me do it. I got it. Ooh, got some good scissors today. And then I break it into a million pieces. <gasps> no, 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 no. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? Don't judge me. I see the judgment in your eyes. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Tell me that doesn't look like the most. Wait. I don't think that's going to work. I'm so sorry. You don't it's know me. It's not going to work. Fine. I just want to get like a good... You know how like people do that with cheese? I want to do that with nudes. Noodles. Ten hours later. We've got a wrapped noodle. That took way too long. That I'd like to admit, okay? <laughs> but how's the taste though? Wow. Is it is it working? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna break this up. Damn. <laughs> Damn, this is a big big king crab. Yeah, this is good. It's so spicy, but it's so good with the king crab. But you know what? I feel like king crab makes everything better. It is incredibly spicy. <laughs> Today, I'm actually going to be just delving deep into the stories. Honey, have you ever watched a show called The Rugrats? The Regrets? No, no, no. Yes. Not that relationship. Okay, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> the what? Regrets? The Regrets. What the kind of sauce is this you have down here? Mm. It's incredibly oily. What is this? It's sesame oil uh -huh. with um, chili paste with ponzu sauce and a yuzu ponzu dressing. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. We I... have just straight ponzu in the fridge. Yeah, I know. like it all except the oil. Anyways, regrets. <laughs> what about it? Mm -mm. Wow, it's so good. No, it's not called the Rugrats. The Rugrats. 
mm-hmm. like what you call a little kid. You're like, oh, you're such a little rug rat. Like a little rat. You a rat, bitch. Snitches get stitches. I don't know how that escalated. It's a Nickelodeon TV show. And there's actually been a lot of speculation, a lot of drama, a lot of theories involving the true meaning of Rogress. There's always a lot of speculation about the true meaning of kids shows. And I'm all aboard because I feel like, you know what? Kids shows are normally meant to be very innocent things meant for kids to consume. However, mm-hmm. I think as a full grown ass adult, if you spend your life creating shows for kids, mm-hmm. sometimes you run out of content and sometimes I think you will get dark with it. <laughs> wow, this is so good. Actually, I love you. Where can I get some regular stuff? <laughs> What do you usually do? Ponzu? Just Ponzu. I'm going to tell you what the Rograts is about first, and then I'm going to tell you what people think it's actually about, okay? And so the Rograts, if you guys have never seen it, it was a nine-season, I believe, running show on Nickelodeon, one of Nickelodeon's most famous children's shows. Uh-huh. And it's truly all about kids. I mean, there's a lot of shows that are about, I don't know, a kid and some sort of animal that talks, or a kid and like a bunch of toys. But uh-huh. Rograts was a collection of kids who would hang out, who would talk to each other. But the interesting thing was, you start to realize as you're watching it that the kids are talking in a kid language. Is it still going on? Mm-mm. Have you ever watched it? Mm-hmm. Mm. I was never a fan. I was never that big of a fan of Nickelodeon. I feel like everyone has like their own thing when they were growing up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the biggest is. ones were, I believe, um, Nickelodeon, Disney, and I don't know if Cartoon Network was meant for kids, but I know a lot of people who watched it. I was never a fan of Cartoon Network. I thought it was too dark. What are you a fan of? I like Disney because they had prettier pictures. I feel like Nickelodeon is very like cartoony. Whereas Disney has like very pretty cartoons. And so I liked watching that. Okay. And so Rograts revolves around a little boy by the name of Tommy. Now Tommy is one years old and he talks to all of his friends in a baby language. And you'll realize as you start watching the show that none of the adults understand what they're saying. Because only the kids can understand the kid language. Does one year old talk? Mm-mm. Oh. Well, I mean, they start making noises, but it's not like actual words. And other kids can understand it, but the parents can't understand it. In this show, I don't know how the human anatomy works in real life, okay? Wow. Uh, Have you seen it? Never. What the hell? <laughs> I've seen the, those photos, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And so Tommy is the little diaper-wearing one-year-old, and he has two parents. He later on in the series actually gets a younger brother. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I said series, and then my series just went off. That's really creepy. His name is Tommy Pickle, and he has two parents, and later on in the series, he has a younger brother that comes into the picture, and guess what his younger brother's name is? Dill. Dill Pickles. Last name is Pickles? Yeah, Tommy Pickles and Dill Pickles. And Dill Pickles? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And so Tommy's mom is also a character in this entire series. And she's a very sweet, loving, educated woman who's very happy, loves her children, is literally your stereotypical loving mother. Whereas Tommy's dad is a little bit interesting. It gets so dark because maybe Tommy's not even real. Not even in the show. It gets so weird, okay? I mean, this is running theories, right? People are talking about. But it makes so much sense that I kind of believe it. Okay. Okay. Wow, it's so good. When the show was airing, nobody's saying any of this. Or some people mm-hmm. are. Now, Tommy's dad, on the other hand, he's a toy maker. Mm-hmm. I 
As the toy maker, he's constantly in his basement, just so engrossed in the toy making process of everything that he doesn't really pay attention to his kids much. He's just so involved in it. Now, he's not the best at it. He's not super skilled. All the toys he ends up making usually fail or they end up breaking. So yeah. it's just an absolute shit show, okay? So that's Tommy and his younger brother, Dill, who doesn't really talk. He just babbles about. And he's the only one that they can't really talk to. He's the only one that doesn't really understand their kid language. Now, you're kind of led to believe in the beginning, well, maybe it's because he's too young, you know? Uh-huh. So Tommy? Tommy is a couple years old. Mm, one. And the baby is a newborn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. That's Tommy, Dill, and his two parents. And they also have a cousin, and it's Angelica Pickles, okay? Angelica is three years old. She's one of the older of the group, and she's got these crazy pigtails. She's known for always carrying around this very weird-looking doll. This becomes pertinent to the horror story that comes afterwards, okay? This doll is always wearing raggedy-ass clothes, and it's always losing chunks of hair. It literally looks like uncooked spaghetti noodles sticking out her head, but clumsy up okay and she's known for just being the antagonist of this entire story she is known for being the villain of this Nickelodeon show she's super spoiled her parents do whatever they want for her because her mom is a workaholic and her mom is always seen on the phone with an employee by the name of Jonathan just barking orders just yelling at Jonathan and she's ha she has a hard time saying no to Angelica okay and Angelica is not very angelic at all she's just always being very very bossy and her dad is pretty much the same her dad just is just loves her as a doting father wants to give her the world but doesn't realize that he's actually making her a brat mm -hmm. well i don't love the body really i like mm. the body i'll take the body no. tommy's best friend his name is chucky he's a red-haired nerd and his dad is also nerdy and his dad ended up remarrying, and they have a stepsister, etc. And then there's Lil and Phil, and they're twins. Mm -hmm. One's a girl, one's a boy, and they're known for just like doing gross things like eating worms and digging in the grass. Ew. Now, it's pertinent that you know this much in the story because it all becomes pertinent to the horror theory behind it. Why do they like to eat worms? Hmm? Why do they like to eat worms? I don't know, kids are really weird. So. The entire time, the parents are easily distracted and they're always not very much taking care of the kids. And the kids are off to do their own adventures. They're always talking to each other. They're always trying to take care of Dill because Dill later, when he comes into the story, he's known for being, you know, not the smartest infant on the block. And that's pretty much the premise of the entire nine seasons of Rugrats. Now, Nickelodeon decided, hey, this is so good. Why don't we bring it back later? Why don't we do a sequel? to it called All Growed Up and it's all of the Rograts but 10 years later. So that would make Angelica 13, that would make Tommy 10. Wait, they're nine seasons into it, they're still three years old or two years old? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I watched Pretty Little Liars and they were like in high school for like 20 years, so. Really? I don't know, it was a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Here. I have one. Don't go. Here, I'll do the other one. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, theory really kind of takes off when the new sequel comes out of All Growed Up because it shows them when they're 10 years older. So, Angelica would be 13, Tommy and all of his friends would be 10, or something along those lines. And the first thing that people realize after watching the show All Growed Up is that everybody's a little bit weirder in the show. There's just something that's a little bit off-putting about it. Now, I never really watched the sequel. 
And I never was a fan of the Rograt show in general. Like, I would watch mm-hmm. it when my friends would watch it, or like if I went to a family friend's house and that's what they had on the TV, I wouldn't be like, ooh, change the channel, but I would just kind of watch it, right? Yeah. For some reason, I just didn't get into it. Leave it in the comments if you absolutely love it and if you see this fan theory actually happening. Mm-hmm. So, Angelica, when she was 13, she was still the evil person. She the antagonist of the entire series. She was still bossing around the kids, and the kids didn't love her. The kids were really, really upset with her. Mm-hmm. In the show, it kind of hints at the idea that she has these behaviors because she's a teenager. That's what happens when you turn 13. You think you're the shit. You think you're this and that. But what people realize is that Dill was a little bit weird. Dill looked very weird. Dill was like nine years old or something and he just looked weird. He always wore these hats. He had a very odd shaped head. Now if you know anything about Nickelodeon cartoons, I mean think about Hey Arnold. They've all got weird ass football heads, right? But Dill had the weirdest head of all. It was like a camel head. It was like a three camel. Like a camel back? Yeah. Or a camel toe. <laughs> oh, is this the one? During the spinoff, Dill would act very weird. You could tell he was not normal. You could tell he wasn't like any of the other kids, and he wasn't like any other nine year old in the show. Or in mm-hmm. real life. And so at one point, someone asked Angelica, hey, why is Dill like that? Why is Dill so weird? And she said something along the lines of, Phil and Lil dropped him on his head when he was young, and this is how he is now. This all theory exists with the fact that Angelica is spoiled. She's a brat, and she understands what all the babies are saying, right? Mm -hmm. But she can also communicate with the adults very, very clearly. And the show All Growed Up kind of showed her in a different light, where she was 13 and still not maturing and still being very erratic, and just something was very off-putting about about her in the show and then it abruptly got canceled. People have this theory and believed that Angelica is the only one that was real inside the show. So obviously you have to remember that the show is an animated series. It's not real people. It's not reality TV. Mm-hmm. That's really deep. <laughs> but in the show you can't help but realize that there are some patterns. Starting Mm -hmm. off with the fact that this is how they believe everything went down. They believe that Tommy, the one-year-old that the show is pretty much based on, a cousin of Angelica, he was actually stillborn. He was born and then died of natural causes, and that's why his dad is so crazy about making all of these toys in the basement. He pretty much loses his mind because when you see him make these toys, it's not in a Uh. calm fashion of, oh, let me make a toy and try to sell it. It's like this very erratic psychotic like ah scrambling to make a toy type of vibe right yeah and also how does a toy inventor support his family when all of his toys break or fail it could be because he's not actually a toy inventor he started doing this because his child died and he needed something to cope. And so he started making all of these toys for his kid that never ended up living. And Phil and Lil, why are there two siblings? They're twins, one's a boy, one's a girl. The only way you can tell them apart is they're like wearing different things and I think one of them has a ribbon in her hair. And that's because Angelica's mom's friend Mm -hmm. ended up terminating her pregnancy Mm -hmm. And Angelica never knew if it was a boy or if it was a girl. And so in her imagination, she created a boy and a girl, Phil and Lil. What about Tommy's best friend, two-year-old Chucky with the red hair? Uh Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. What about him? Is he a figment of her imagination too? And... Mind you, this is all because all the families are friends with each other, so the kids are friends, right? Mm -hmm. And they said that Chucky's mom had passed away in a massive car accident, leaving Chucky's dad to be a widower, and that's why he ended up remarrying another woman and having a stepsister brought into the family. Uh But the dad is always acting very nervous, almost on edge, almost as if something very, very horrendous is going to happen at any minute, which makes sense because your wife just passed. It's a very traumatic experience, but the theory is that Chucky actually passed with the wife. Chucky was in the car with his mom, and they got into a car accident, and Chucky also died. Why would Angelica create all of these kids in her imagination, right? And it's mainly because she was diagnosed a bipolar schizophrenic, But why is it her? Why is she the only one that's real? It all comes down to her doll, right? 
So she's a bipolar mm. schizophrenic. Okay. And she needs help coping with everything that's happened around her. Uh-huh. When she was young. Because imagine being young and, you know, you have a cousin who wasn't really born. You learn about these things or you overhear your parents talking about it. Yeah. Your parents don't really pay a lot of attention to you. Mm-hmm. Things are going to start happening. And so she created all of the rugrats in her head. And she would just boss them around. And this would give her a sense of security. Now, when All Growed Up happened, and she was 13 years old, mm-hmm. allegedly the show got canceled because this was based on a real character by the name of Angelica. And she ended up dying when she was 13 but because she, she overdosed on drugs. Now, the reason people believe this is there was one other person in this entire series that was not a figment of Angelica's alleged imagination, but actually saw the kids with Angelica. And her name was Susie, and she was Angelica's best friend, right? And so a lot of people believe that Susie would come home and tell her parents these things, and her parents worked for Nickelodeon. And so they created a whole show about it. And this was when the kids were young, right? And Angelica was three and Susie was three. And so Susie would come home and be like, Mom, my friend Angelica has a bunch of made up friends. And the parents serious? would do some digging, ask around the neighborhood, is Angelica okay? And people would say, oh, you know, she's had some traumatic things happen around her. Her cousin died and, you know, all these things. And so then they made an entire TV show about it based very loosely on these characters, but still made it watchable for kids, right? And then they grow up, the show ended, Susie is now 13 and still talking to her parents, and Angelica ended up overdosing on drugs. And that's when the All Growed Up sequel was cancelled, is the running theory. Uh, uh, uh. Now, let's talk about Dill real quick. Dill is the only one that can't really communicate with the group. And it's because Dill was real, but Angelica didn't know that. And so when Angelica was young, Dill is her cousin, by the way, she decided, hey, Dill, leave, right? Because she would boss everyone around in Rugrats, and they would do as she said. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like if you have someone in your imagination and you say, hey, you're going to leave, that person's gonna leave because it's in your imagination. And that was the whole point of her creating this universe is that she could control these things. Mm -hmm. And so she would tell Dill to, hey, stop doing this or hey, leave, and Dill wouldn't listen because Dill is not part of her imagination. But Mm -hmm. she couldn't separate the two. And so she ends up getting mad and she ends up getting on top of Dill and beating him as a baby when Angelica was three. And her, her uncle and her aunt come in, Dill's parents, you know, mm-hmm. rush Angelica off, but it ended up giving a lot of mental and physical setbacks for Dill. And that's why in the All Grown Up series, you see him not exactly acting the same as all the other kids. And she's always just been hounded by the guilt from that. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people believe her best friend Susie in the show is actually the daughter of Nickelodeon creators. Not the creator of Nickelodeon, but like, cre- yeah. But the show creators and like the show producers, they came out and they were like, no, no, it's all for joy. But do you think this is so crazy of a story that they need to use a real person's life story to create? So it's like loosely based, right? So a lot Mm -hmm. of people are saying like, how do you come up with all these characters, you know? Mm -hmm. And all these very weird specific things, like why does Dill have to be weird? You know, like it's just so random and out of nowhere. And why did Chucky's mom die? And why is his dad a nervous wreck? It's just super, super random, you know? Mm. So there's just so many weird things that doesn't make sense. Well, it's like one of those situations where if you're talking about an adult show, it makes a lot of sense because adults want a lot of subplots, a lot of backstory for each character. Yeah. But when you're talking about a kid's show, none of these are really pertinent to kids. Oh. You know, that's why a lot of people believe that this is the sub-story behind it. Because why would a kid be interested if Chucky's mom died in a car accident or if they just never mentioned Chucky's mom? Right? 
So did it make sense to you when you read about this theory? It did. I mean, I don't know if it's true, but it made a lot of sense. <laughs> You're right, like, huh? Yeah. Hmm. So this is a very popular theory. Mm -hmm. Because it's so random, you know? <laughs> Was the show popular? Yeah. It's one of Nickelodeon's most popular shows. Okay. And they eventually ended, people believe, for that reason. Yeah. That was like the end of the story, you know? Because they, they have nothing to base the story on anymore. Yeah, but also maybe they're just like, oof. Um, like that got real dark. And maybe they had to deal with, you know, the daughter Susie dealing with the trauma losing her best friend at 13. <coughs> Susie's on TV, he said. He goes, hunting me. Huh? Hunting me. Susie's hunting <coughs> you? You mean Angelica? Susie's alive and well, I think. Okay, Angelica. <laughs> he said, okay, Angelica. Was that, that was so creepy? Weird. That was so weird. What yeah, happened? It, it literally went into my nose for no reason. What do you mean for no reason? Were you even eating it? What do you think of the theory, guys? Do you think it's real? Or do you think it's just like a far-fetched scenario? Hmm. Right? It's very curious. Hmm. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this story. Let me know in the comments if you entered to win the MacBook Air giveaway because that's part of that. Everything will be linked in the description. And I love you guys. Thank you, Credit Sesame, for sponsoring today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.